Hello guys, welcome to another section of Learning with Prep Class. I am Tutor Chima. Today, we will continue our solving of our jam pass question 2019 biology. You know in our previous video, we solved questions um, 31 to 35. Yes, we solved questions 31 to 35. So today we are going to be looking at questions 36 to 40. Alright guys, before we produce, do not forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, like our videos, drop one or two comments on our comment section box. A comment can be a question, can be a question on this video, can be a question on the previous video I have done. Mm -hmm. Just drop one or two questions and I will always be available to attend to your question. Mm -hmm. When you go below there, you see a notification bell. Mm -hmm. I advise you click it on and activate it. Once your notification bell is activated, you will always be the first to be notified whenever we have an educational content like this on YouTube. You can be kind enough to share our videos so that it's going to reach as much viewers as possible. Now, having said that, guys, we are going to go straight to the business of today. Question 36. Let me pick my pointer. Exoskeleton is not found in the... Exoskeleton is not found in the... Is it a maggot? Is it a mosquito larva? Is it an earthworm? Is it a caterpillar? Exoskeleton is the one that is found outside the body of a living organism, most especially invertebrates. Mm -hmm. Now, exoskeleton is mostly found in the group of invertebrates we call the arthropods. Are you following the arthropods? Now, look what I said there. Exoskeleton is found majorly in arthropods. You know, exoskeleton is made of chitin. Mm -hmm. A carbohydrate material that is strengthening the deposit of what protein. It is not a living tissue, so it does not it does not what grow. So organisms that have this exoskeleton usually practically call molting. They remove the exoskeleton from time to time in order for them to what grow. Mm -hmm. Now exoskeleton are mostly found in arthropods. Arthropods include organisms like insects, spiders, crabs, shrimp, prawn, millipede, centipede. They are all arthropods and they have what exoskeleton outside their bodies they beat up. Now, all of the organisms listed above are arthropods except earthworm. Earthworm is a soft bodied organism that belongs to the analytics earthworm, leeches, and other worms like that. So, all of the other all of the organisms listed above are arthropods except earthworms or earthworm rather. Earthworm it's an earthworm, which is an annelid. So earthworm belongs to annelid. Earthworms make use of hydrostatic skeleton. You know, we have three types of skeletons. We have the hydrostat You know, we have three types of skeletons. We have the hydrostatic skeleton, we have the endoskeleton, we have the exoskeleton. Hydrostatic skeleton is what I make use of what we call fluid pressure, mm -hmm. whereby the organism pumping liquid in its uh, body surface. Are you following that? So I just taking use of fluid pressure. So it's found in organisms like mostly the worms. Then exoskeleton, the one that is found outside the body of the living organism, like the arthropods, and endoskeleton, the one that is found mostly in what? In the vertebrates. So of course the earthworm does not have exoskeleton, it makes use of hydrostatic skeleton. So exoskeleton is not found in earthworm. If you look at those other organisms, maggots is the larva stage of a house fly. So it has a skeleton. Mosquito lava is a lava stage of mosquito, it makes it a skeleton. Caterpillar is a lava stage of butterfly, it makes it a skeleton. But this earthworm is a soft bodied annelid that uses hydrostatic skeleton. So the correct answer there is earthworm. 37. Blood clotting is initiated by you see the leukocytes. The leukocytes are white blood cells, they play role in the face of the body. You see the platelets, I think so. You see the hemolymph, you see the Hemoglobin that is responsible for transmitting oxygen. So outside there is platelets. Platelets are responsible for blood clotting. You know we have three blood cells. Mm -hmm. We have three blood cells. Mm -hmm. We have the white blood cells. We have the red blood cells. We have the platelets. The right red blood cells are responsible for transmitting oxygen. The white blood cells are responsible for defense. They fight invading microorganisms to prevent us from getting sick, while the platelets are responsible for 
blood clotting. When you wound, the ability of your wound to heal is what we call that blood clotting. And what's responsible for that is what? Platelets. Mm -hmm. So our answer there is what? Platelets. That's it. Pepsin is a digestive enzyme which breaks the cellulose into glucose molecules. Is it carbohydrate into simple sugars? Is it protein into peptones? Is it fat into glycerol and fatty acids? Now you must know that pepsin is a digestive enzyme found in the stomach. It converts proteins into peptones, proteases and polypeptides. There are two enzymes that are found in the stomach. One is pepsin, one is renin. Renin is responsible for acting on milk. It breaks down milk from the uh, soluble carcinogen. It breaks down milk from the soluble carcinogen to what is soluble casein. Then after that, pepsin will now act on the casein. So we have renin and pepsin. Why pepsin act on other food? Why but renin act on milk first before pepsin will now act on it to break down the proteins to either peptones, proteases, or polypeptides. So the enzyme that is found that breaks down uh, pepsin breaks down and uh, uh, pepsin that is enzyme that breaks down what proteins into what peptones proteins. So the answer is proteins into peptones. So it affects only proteins, it digests only proteins, breaking them into peptones, proteases, or polypeptides. So the answer is what C. 39. Anaerobic respiration in yeast produces, anaerobic respiration in yeast produces, is it carbon dioxide and ethanol? Is it carbon dioxide and water? Is it carbon dioxide and glucose? Is it ethanol and water? Let's see. Now, anaerobic respiration in yeast produces ethanol, carbon dioxide and energy. This process is known as alcoholic fermentation and is very important in the breweries and wine making industries. Mm -hmm. So they make use of what? In this process, what I'm trying to say is that in alcoholic fermentation, they make use of an enzyme. We have zymes, we have invertase. No, this is zymes, not zymes. We have uh, invertase, I can remember uh, invertase. We have invertase, we have maltase, maltase, invertase. These enzymes can be produced not only by yeast, but it can be produced by other bacteria. So they collect this enzyme, they extract it using biotechnology, they extract this enzyme from yeast, other fungi and bacteria, and use it to act on carbohydrates and convert it into what? Ethanol. That process is known as alcoholic fermentation. That is what they use in beer and wine making industry, whether they use carbohydrate materials or foods like glucose, starch. Mm -hmm. The starchy foods can be sorghum, millet, cassava, and they can use microorganisms to break them down into what? Alcohol. That process is known as alcoholic fermentation. Mm -hmm. So, but they are not asking us yeast. Yeast carry out what we call anaerobic respiration sometimes. And that process, it breaks down sugar into ethanol. If you tap a freshly palm pa uh, wine now, it contains yeast. The yeast will start acting on the sugars in that palm wine, converting it into what? Alcohol. The process continues until the alcoholic level of that palm wine is about 15%. Then the yeast stops working. Mm -hmm. So that's the function of this. They break down uh, sugars into ethanol, carbon dioxide, and what energy. Yeast is also important in bread making. Can you remember? They use yeast to make bread to rice. What do the yeast do? The yeast will act on the carbohydrate or sugars in that bread to produce ethanol and carbon dioxide. Is the carbon dioxide or the carbon dioxide? Because carbon dioxide, carbon dioxide is also known as carbon dioxide. It is that carbon dioxide that is produced that now makes that bread to rise. Are you following? So that's a, a product of anaerobic respiration. The yeast makes produces ethanol carbon dioxide and maybe some energy so ethanol and carbon dioxide so A is your answer carbon dioxide and ethanol 40 underground stems which grow horizontally through the soil are underground stems which grow horizontally through the soil are is it bulbs is it rhizomes is it runners is it combs i will show you the pictures of each of them now this is a bulb mm -hmm. bulb can find be found in onion slain uh, plants like onions is a bulb this is a rhizome now if you look here you see that 
this one, the stem is not horizontal. This, this one is the the stem is upward. Look at the stem. This one shooting up at this is the stem. This one is playing roller as the root. This one shooting up is the stem. So the stem is vertical. It's not horizontal. Talk more of being underground. So bulb does not fall under that category of underground stem. The stem is vertical, shoots up out of the soil. Rhizome, look at rhizome. You can see the stem. This one that is going up is the leaf. The stem is horizontal. Look at it. You can see this hand is trying, man is trying to cut the stem. The stem grows horizontally, the leaves grows up vertically. Stem grows horizontally, leaves grows vertically. So you can see that rhizome is a horizontal stem. Also, it is underground. That was why I showed you this picture. Which of the following says horizontal is grow horizontally through the soil. So you can see that it's underground. This brown part is the soil. This up part is the air. You can see that rhizome is horizontal and it's also an underground stem. So you can see that rhizomes have stems that grow horizontally and also underground. Runners, runners have horizontal stem, but they have stems that grow horizontally, but not underground. They grow on the surface of the soil. Hmm? Horizontal stem that grows on the surface, but they are asking us underground stems which grow horizontally. They are asking us stems that are that grow horizontally and also underground. Runners grow horizontally but not underground, so we will not go for that. Comes grow vertically, so our correct answer is what? Rhizome because it grows horizontally and it's also what underground. So our best choice is what rhizome. All right, guys, we've come to the end of today's section of learning with prep class. We looked at past questions on Jan 2019. We solved questions 36 to 40. Now, if you look here, you see this bit.ly. This is a link. I want you to copy this link, paste it on your browser, and load it. Once you do so, it's going to take you straight to our WhatsApp group. So when you join us on our WhatsApp group, you'll be getting updates and infos for the latest content or videos we have on our channel. So till we meet again, I remain to touch Bye.